but it, it honors, uh, first of all, of course, the, the deceased, the men and women who have, have died in honor of this country, serving this country. It, it's also meant to honor the current veterans who have made it back home, the, the uh, soldiers who are still at war fighting, and the up-and-coming recruits that are starting their journey. So we're going to uh, acknowledge each and every one of those people. So I strongly encourage you, I'd, I'd like to ask you to please come and, and support and enjoy. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak today. Bye-bye. Thank you, Monica. Some know him as Sam from El Sereno Senior Center. He's a personal and dear friend of ours. Today I invite Simo Noah, U.S. Army Vietnam veteran. that we're from Hawaii. No, we're not. We're from Samoa. I think the best decision that our my ancestors made was to associate our tiny island with this great country. In 1900, Samoa signed a treaty with the United States for American Samoa to become a fueling station for the Navy. And since then, we have moved on. Now we are under the Department of the Interior. Because if that didn't happen, I don't know where I would be now. So thanks to my ancestors for that. I also will want to give thanks to my employer, the City of Los Angeles, Department of Recreation and Parks, for giving me this assignment at the El Sereno City Center. Whoever made that decision, I thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Wieser is a dear friend of the El Sereno City Center. I know he also supports the other senior centers in his district. But all the senior centers, all the seniors at El Sereno knows we are his favorite. We are number one to him. And we really do appreciate that. Mr. Weezer has this uh, sponsored this event called the Snowball. And one of the seniors came and asked me, are we really actually going to go play with the snow? And, you know, the person that asked that question is a Pacific Islander. Well, I started laughing. I said, yes. Then all of a sudden, my office was full with seniors asking me this. Is that what's going to happen? No, of course I was. But anyway, the reason why I'm bringing this up because when we went to the event, this man here acknowledged the veterans on that special event. Yes. And I stood up very proud for him acknowledging that. He shows me that he cares about the veterans. And this event today too also shows us that he really cares about the veterans. I think Barack Obama should 
nominate you to be the next Secretary of Veterans Affairs. Um, and thank you for inviting me to this event. And this year was the first year that we did um, the Veterans um, Day celebration in March. Uh, that's going to be an annual event for us for the El Sereno Senior Center. We're also thinking about doing something like a wall at the Senior Center where we can get the names of the veterans in the community. And I know he's listening. Uh, you know, put on that wall. Uh, that's something that we I'm going to have to uh, you know, planning on doing that. And I also want to appreciate working with Mr. Julio, your your office, and also Sine, working together very closely with um, with our senior center in El Sereno. Thank you very much. Thank you. The shirt that I'm wearing was made by a senior at the center. The lady is wearing was made by a senior. So we have a lot of talented seniors at the El Sereno Senior Center. So if you want to buy a shirt, I mean, uh, get a shirt, give me the material, I'll give it to the lady to sew it. Thank you, Sam. You know why I like Sam? So we used to have our, our uh, neighborhood council meetings. He wouldn't turn off the lights on us. The other lady did. He's a lot nicer. Come on. Thank you, Sam. Without further ado, if I can kindly invite Dan Arguello, U.S. Army veteran, Vietnam veteran, Purple Heart recipient. Thank you very much, Honorable Councilman. Honored to be here this afternoon. You know, uh, I was talking to my wife this morning. We were, did the math, and I realized that uh, I get I got out of the service on uh, June 12, 1968. Makes that like 46 years, that French, French, right? 46 years. I'm a senior citizen too. I qualify for a shirt. Just a, a, a kind of a private note, and then a kind of a pitch, but. You know, in doing that, being a 60s vet, as you know, uh, it was a tough time for us, and I immediately remember getting out of the military, jumping on a plane as quick as I could, getting home, sitting in my bed, looking in the mirror, and I said, oh, I'm glad that's over. Yeah. And I immediately tried to get into what life was before I left, and I realized after a while it wasn't the same life anymore. And I tried, I got within, you know, within myself, and I realized along the way there were folks there who were kind of like guiding me through, helping me out, helping me get a job, helping me buy a car, kind of put me in a certain place where I could get uh, self-esteem back. And I started working for a bank in the banking industry. And I realized that that was a lot to do with folks like you who wore our nation's cloth along with myself. And as, as time went by, I said, boy, two of the youngest, longest years of my life weren't so bad after well, but I got the friends that I had from there who I think about and the honor and dignity that I am proud to have shared those times with you. I'm honored to be here in your presence. Thank you for your service to our country. Thank you. Thank you. But also, there's another type of, of uh, citizenship, another type of patriotism that goes along with that that helped us all come home. Not only our folks, but the ones who are First World War, Second World War, on and on, and come to help today who need our help. And that's a patriotism is not only put out by the uniform and the cloth, but also the patriotism that my mother, my father, my brother, my nephews, my family and friends, and your family and friends put out to help you come back home. And they deserve a tribute today as well, as their patriotism stands out. Thank you. Thank you, my wife. Thank you, my family. Thank you and your families, too. is a patriot. And I want to tell you something that he has helped us spearhead. Down the road a piece is going to be a veterans memorial in which all veterans from our community are being recognized and that's going to be built in the very near future. And there's a committee that you've heard referred to before. 
and it's called the El Sereno Veterans Monument uh, Committee. But it's also made up of individuals from the Neighborhood Council and from the Bicentennial Committee. And they're here this afternoon with us. Thank you very much for helping us. And I have the honor of sitting along with other great colleagues on that committee. Uh, so I want to thank uh, you also for your support. Uh, the chairperson, Ruben, is here. Ruben Chavez, there he is right there. Uh, Vice President is Jenny Guerrero, she's here. Okay, myself, I'm not the hatchet man, I'm the treasurer. So I'm going to ask you for money. Be ready because we're coming. And uh, Cynthia Sandoval, those are the, the board members. So the, that pitch is basically thank you very much. We're going to ask you for a little more patriotism down the road, peace. And uh, please don't. Uh, He's angry when you see me. It's my job. Thank you very much. It's not to be here. Have a great day. Thank you, Dan. Don't forget his face, folks. He'll be in the community very, very soon. Now it's my honor and privilege to greatly invite a dear friend, George Cabrera Jr., who places the memorial tribute in honor of his father, George Cabrera Sr. we have uh, Annette as our um, hostess for the El Serena Community Coordinating Council. Which, let's give uh, Annette a great hand. I think that she's doing a great, great job. Okay, uh, I'd like to begin by saying today, today is a special day where we reflect on all the members of the armed forces that we lost in all these wars, and um, particularly my dad. I'd like to um, start out on my father. Oh, by the way, hold on for a second. You got to excuse me. It looks like I'm my uh, but I'll, um, I'll say a little uh, tribute about my dad. Uh, my father, to begin with, uh, my father was um, in the 8th U.S. Army Air Corps, uh, where he was a radio man and an aerial gunner. He served a term from uh, 1942 to 1945 in the European theater where he went through, his uh, B-17 bomber went through uh, devastating uh, bombing runs through Germany. At that time, my father had flew 35 HAL missions. HAL missions are either your KIA killed in action or MIA missing in action. My dad, af after the war, my father started a uh, print shop, better known as Sunset Printers in Alhambra for 26 years. At, at that time, uh, my father, to supplement his income, he was a realtor. And um, during that uh, time to uh, raise uh, money you know, to support his family, uh, that was another way of uh, supplementing his uh, income you know, for uh, that, that time. I'd like to say at this time, uh, my dad, uh, after the uh, ceremony, I hope you uh, join us. I have a replica of my father's uh, armed forces, which will be displayed at Echo in Mexico. Uh, normally, I would display it here at the flagpole. And I encourage uh, the audience and our community to uh, join us for that event. That way, you can see where my uh, father was and you'll see all the collages that were involved when he was in the European theater. And finally, I want to thank everyone for attending this event, and particularly, let's give a great hand to our photographers, Richard Canales and Eric Sarney. And finally, I want to say 
at this time. God bless our community, El Sereno, and God bless America. Thank you, George, for those kind words and sharing about your father. At this time, if we have a new leader in the community, it's a privilege to, to see such a change for a good growth and good things about to happen. I would like to invite a very new and dear friend, Marlene Fonseca with LA32 Coordinating Council. Excuse me, LA32 Neighborhood Council. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Marlene Fonseca. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I am your new president for our Neighborhood Council, LA32. It's an honor to be here this morning. I'm glad to see um, such a participation from our community. I'd like to thank Councilman Wiesar's office, as well as American Legion Post 139 and the El Sereno, our very own El Sereno Veterans Monument Committee for putting together this event and for keeping the tradition of Memorial Day in our community. It's important to remember the meaning of Memorial Day. It's easy to get caught up in the hustle and bustle on the day off, the beginning of summer. But to truly remember the meaning is imperative. And along those lines, I'd like to thank all the veterans that are here, all the veterans in our community, and each and every veteran that has served our country. As we all know, it takes a special person to make a choice to defend our country, to fight for our freedoms and liberties. They're not fighting for themselves. They're fighting for each and every one of us. It's easy to fight for ourselves. That's natural instinct. We defend ourselves. But they've made a conscious choice to defend us, to protect our rights. And those who have died in the line of duty doing so have paid the ultimate price for each and every one of us. Like Councilman Wiesar said, freedom is not free. Um, they are proof of that, and they have paid the price for us. <laughs> Sorry. I'd like to, um, again, honor them and thank them on Memorial Day is when we do pay our respects. We take a moment of silence at 3 p.m. to honor them. However, we do need to be conscious and honor them every day, again, piggyback, piggybacking off what the councilman said. It's every day that we should be paying our respects by honoring our country, by embracing the opportunities that this country and our life has provided us, by truly appreciating our freedom and our rights, and by utilizing it to the best of our abilities to improve not only our lives, but to pay it forward to our neighbors and to our community. I'd like, I look forward to working with our community for the next two years. I thank you for coming out and representing us in such a nice way this morning and keeping the tradition of Memorial Day. Um, I'd like to invite an increase in community participation, communication, so that we can work together to achieve common goals for our, all the neighborhoods in our community of 90032. Thank you again. Have a wonderful weekend and a safe holiday. God bless you all. God bless America. Thank you, Marlene. Are there any other neighborhood council members here? Raise your hand. Michelle, Cynthia, Mr. Chavez. Congratulations on your, some of them are re-elected. Michelle, welcome. You're the new kid on the block. Yes, she is. She will be. Oh, yes. And thanks again, Marlene. Thank you for coming out. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Marlene. We look forward to working together. At this time, I'd like to invite Phil Rep. Yumi Ha with Congressman Xavier Becerra's office. My name is Yumi Ha from Congressman Javier Becerra's office. He sends his regrets for not being able to be here. He's in Washington, D.C. right now. And he'd like to give a special message of gratitude to the veterans that are here. Thank you for your service, and you guys will always be remembered. Have a good day today. Thank you. At this time, we would like to invite Los Angeles Fire Department. I'm not sure if anybody is here today. They're out community serving and doing training, conduction. Um,
Okay, like I said, they're out serving our community. Um, we'll move further on the program. If I can invite Los Angeles Police Department. <laughs> Officer Fernal. Good morning, everyone, and uh, again, I appreciate being invited. Uh, I've spoken at this ceremony many times, and uh, I'm always humbled to meet, uh, see new faces and see some familiar ones, some veterans. Today I have uh, with me a couple veterans. We have a lot of veterans on our department. I have Army veteran Rufus Ward and Marine Corps veteran Paul Rodriguez. And normally they're very talkative, but today they're a little shy, so I'm going to do all the speaking, and uh, I'm actually pretty good at that. So. Uh, Again, the Los Angeles Police Department has a lot of veterans on the department, uh, years past and present. As a matter of fact, we have one young uh, uh, Army veteran who is uh, doing his probation, but we were just told yesterday that he's getting orders. Uh, he's a uh, uh, reserve right now. He's getting orders. He's going to be sent back to Afghanistan. And uh, so he's only spent nine months on the department. And he's already getting sent back to Afghanistan. And when he comes back, he has to do his whole probation all over again. But that's just part of the... Uh, but, of course, the job will be there for him. But uh, the department, uh, again, is filled with a lot of veterans, uh, my father included. Uh, some of you have uh, heard me speak of him. He's 91 years old, uh, Army veteran from World War II. Uh, he's been on the History Channel. It's always a, a pleasure and, and a joy to see him on TV, and especially when my kids point him out. Uh, our son, my son, he was at Navy, and I know I see a couple of Navy veterans here. <laughs> and my, uh, my wife is a uh, retired uh, Air Force, uh, 27 years, uh, so I, I have a lot of uh, military in my family. I'm very proud of them, as I am of all you uh, veterans here. Again, uh, the Los Angeles Police Department would like to thank the veterans for all their service, those that uh, serve with my department and all of you veterans out there, uh, past and present, George, your father as well. I, I had a pleasure of meeting his father and knowing him, an outstanding gentleman. Again, thank you for inviting us. Thank you. <laughs> Moving forward now with our Memorial Day message. U.S. Navy Vietnam veteran, Mark Overstreet. Well, Memorial Day is celebrated throughout the world. Every country has it. They may not call it Memorial Day, but they absolutely remember those that have served their country. Memorial Day for many Americans is an unofficial beginning of summer. For others, it's a day to remember and to honor. It's a day, it's a day to honor and remember our fallen. But as it's been said, that's not enough. They died not just for their country, Oftentimes, they died for their comrades serving next to them. Many of our heroes died protecting those whom they served with. It wasn't only a matter of serving and saving the United States because this great nation would carry on. It was a commitment towards their brothers in arms. I don't know if you know, but more than a million Americans have died in the wars that our nation has been involved in since the colonial soldiers took up arms in 1775. Many of them died protecting one another, but they also served so that we today can have our freedoms, the freedoms we love most, our religion, the other freedoms such as speech and protecting our families. By remaining true to these principles, we honor their sacrifice on a day like today. We veterans join the military to serve and protect our country, our families, our freedoms. We join knowing that the time might come that we might have to dig deep into our souls to find the courage if the situation arose. Several years ago, I read an article about a father whose son came home on leave from the Iraqi war. Father went into the son's bedroom that night. 
stood over him, looking at his son with admiration. His son was sleeping peacefully in the safety of their own as the family watched over him. The father's eyes welled up with tears as he thought about how much he loved his son and prayed that his son would continue to be safe. I have a son. I can't imagine the pain that a father goes through losing a son. For the widows, for the widowers, for the mothers, for the mothers, brothers, sisters, for the children, the pain that they go through, remembering every day, every day, the love that they lost. God bless the families of our fallen. Now, I've been an educator for over 35 years, and I hate to, I hate to say that seldom have I seen teachers giving lessons about Memorial Day or Veterans Day over the last 15 years. It's just something that's been set aside. But we have holidays for it. We even get out of school for it. I'm glad to say that my wife took her class to the Evergreen Cemetery where the students place flags on the graves of our fallen soldiers. But if the schools aren't teaching about the history and the patriotism, then it's our duty. It's our duty to teach our children about the courage, the honor, and the pride of our military personnel. Again, Memorial Day is a day to honor and to remember who we are, what we stand for, at least we forget. One last thing, I have a children's book. It's called The Wall. It's about a father and his young son. They go to the Vietnam War Memorial to find the grandfather's name that the boy never knew. The last two pages. The boy says, Grandpa won't know who I am, I tell Dad. I think he will, Dad says. I move closer to Dad. It's sad here, Dad. Dad puts his hand on my shoulder, I know, but it's a place of honor. And I'm glad, glad your grandfather's name is on the wall. I am too, says the little boy. I am. And as they walk away, the little boy says, but I'd rather have grandpa, grandpa here taking me to the river, telling me to button up my coat. I'd rather have him here. God bless the fall. Thank you, Mark. Now for a benediction. If we can please invite Pastor Joe Alvarado back to the podium. Just again, I'm extremely honored of everybody's words that were shared here today. As I was coming here, I was listening to traffic reports. Somebody gave a report that the, the creator of the, the first action figure uh, of the G.I. Joe passed away today. And as I was giving thought about that, that this man, whatever his reasons, it's a beautiful thing that, that the first action hero was, was a soldier. I don't know, you know, veterans' opinions of that, but, you know, he, it was just the blessing that there's a hero. The first action figure was a hero. Many other heroes have come through since then, but nothing will, will connect the way that soldier connected. Any G.I. Joe fans here? Uh, you don't have no toys on your kids, or what, what happened? But one thing I, I do appreciate being here today is that something was created. Even as that man created that action figure, something was created in me today. And I would say a new appreciation for veterans. 
You know, uh, a famous man said, uh, once upon a time, do this in remembrance of me. And he was talking about communion and, 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 and juice or wine that represented blood and, and his life that represented the bread that represented the body. Well, I just would like to share, there's just a new respect in me today for, for veterans. And, and I get came by being invited here today. And I thank you for that. Nothing can compare to that, the appreciation, the gratitude. Uh, you were created as an action figure of heroes. And you're, st you're not an action figure, you're a real life. You represent a family, you represent a community, you represent a, a country. And, and I appreciate that I can walk away from here today knowing that the Creator God has put a deeper respect and reverence and honor for those of you that are here today. As I said, wounded maybe physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, whatever the wounds are, you will be more in my prayers. You'll be more in my concern. You'll be more in what I can do to honor you. And the creators of this event and today and those that are honoring, I thank you for that. If you'll bow your heads with me today, please. Thank you, God. Father, I thank you so much. God, that just coming here a, a little while ago, I'm, I'm leaving here a different man, God. With a different gratitude for, for men and women, Lord, that, that served and gave in their lives and the ultimate sacrifices. I thank you today, Lord, that, that others can also walk away with something that I have shared with people here today with the same reason and the same purpose to remember and to honor, to love and to respect and cherish God. Father, the military veterans, Lord, those that are in active duty today all over this planet, some are even up there in the sky, Father, on other different missions, Lord. Wherever they're at today, we honor and respect them, God. We thank you that El Sereno is a community, Lord, that, that puts a, a value on these men and women, Lord, today. And that's what this beautiful ceremony conducted today is about, God. And we pray that we would not forget as we walk away from this street, this, this, this flagpole, God, this place of remembrance, Lord, that we would not leave and just forget about what happened here today. I pray, God, that we would remember, God, and continue to do things, Lord, to bring mon monuments, uh, Father God, to bring consciousness, memorials, Lord God, remembrance, uh, uh, Father God, of uh, medals, whatever it is, 